Hey, how's it going everybody? Welcome back to Aussie Fish Keeping. So in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at six of the best bottom dwelling aquarium fish for your aquarium. So bottom dwelling aquarium fish are a great addition for a wide variety of reasons. Some of the reasons I like to use bottom dwelling aquarium fish is they help kick up any detritus that settles on the bottom of your aquarium. They also help turn over substrate and they're also very great at eating leftover fish food. So yeah, basically what I've done for today's video is pick out six of my favorite bottom dwelling aquarium fish. But yeah, I guess without any further ado, let's just jump straight into today's video with the first fish on our list. So as for our first fish today, I don't think this is gonna come as a surprise to many people. We have Corydoras catfish. So there is a variety of different species of Corydoras catfish out there. Obviously the most common are the albino, bronze and peppered Corys. And then you can also get a little bit of the rarer Corys like Sturbys, Pandas, Orange Venezuelans. As well as that, there's obviously some super rare ones you can get as well. So Corydoras catfish are one of the greatest beginner fish and a lot of the time they're sold as cleaner fish. And the reason for that is because they're really great at picking up any of that leftover aquarium fish food. So when you feed your other aquarium fish, they'll actually oftentimes miss a lot of fish food. And this food will sink down to the bottom where the corys will eat it. But in saying that, the corys can't just survive off this, so you do need to supplement their diet with some sort of sinking wafer or cory pellets. Another great thing these guys will do is they'll actually sift through the substrate, and by doing that, they're picking out any of that detritus that's in there and kicking that up into the water column. And that makes it a lot easier for your aquarium filter to suck up. So they are super great at keeping your aquarium clean. As well as that, obviously, like I said, they are a great beginner fish. So they're super easy to care for. And as for the water parameters, you're going to want to keep them in. You're going to want a temperature of about 22 to 26 degrees Celsius, which is about 72 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And you're gonna to wanna to keep them in a pH anywhere between 6.5 to 7.5. So something to remember if you are gonna keep these guys is they do like to be kept in schools. So they are a great little schooling fish. And most of the time you're gonna want a school of at least three to four in there, just because they are a very social fish and they'll oftentimes school around the bottom of your aquarium. But yeah, with that being said, Corydoras catfish are definitely a great little bottom dwelling aquarium fish. Moving on to the next fish on our list, we have a little loach, we have coolie loaches. So coolie loaches are a super cool little loach. They literally just look like a little snake or like a eel looking thing. They're another great fish at kicking up any of that detritus. They also bury in the substrate as well and they'll eat any of that leftover food that your other fish don't eat. On top of that, they're super peaceful so they can go in any sort of aquarium with other peaceful aquarium fish. So you don't wanna keep them with things like cichlids or big fish that can eat them. But things like angelfish, rams, tetras, barbs, all sorts of those tropical aquarium fish do very well with them. Them. Another really cool thing about these guys is they'll actually eat any pest snails So they won't really go out and actively hunt them They may every now and then but the best way to feed them your pest snails is to collect some up Crush their shell and put them in your aquarium and those will sink down for your coolie loaches to eat So they're super great at snail control as well And these guys are another super easy fish to care for so as for the water parameters You're gonna want to keep them in you do want a temperature of about 23 to 26 degrees Celsius, which is about 74 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And you also want a pH anywhere between six to 6.5. So the only real downside to these guys, in my opinion, is that they're mainly a nocturnal fish. So they only really come out at night or when your lights are off, which means you don't really get to see them often. And in fact, I used to keep these guys and I never really saw them. But once they do get to a decent size, they do feel a lot more comfortable in your aquarium. So they'll start coming out a lot more often. It's just when you first get them in there, a lot of the time you'll sort of lose them for a little while. They'll come out every now and then to eat, but yeah, in my opinion, you don't really see them. But yeah, with that being said, coolie loaches are another great bottom dwelling aquarium fish. Moving on to the next species of fish on our list, we actually have a group of fish and that's dwarf cichlids. So dwarf cichlids could be things like crebensis, apistos, rams, golden eye cichlids, any sort of those small bottom dwelling cichlids, I guess. So I'm mainly talking about 
about South American cichlids, but other cichlids like Crevensis do like similar water parameters and similar tank settings. But for the most part, a lot of the dwarf cichlids are from South America, so that's where you'll get your Apistos, your Golden Eyes, your Rams, and things like that. And I absolutely love dwarf cichlids, so I've really been getting into them lately. I've got like some Apistos and some Golden Eyes at the moment, and they're by far one of the best little centerpiece aquarium fish. So you can really set up a tank around these guys. They have some super nice colors. There's obviously a bunch of different varieties, so there's lots of different colors and patterns. And yeah, you can quite literally set up a tank around these guys so they are the centerpiece. Another great thing about these guys is they're actually relatively peaceful, so they can go with a variety of different tank mates. I keep my Epistos with some blue eyes, and I keep my golden eye cichlids with some Denios and stuff like that. And I've also got some Epistos down here that I keep with cherry barbs and some more blue eyes, so they are super peaceful. And one of the great things about these guys is particularly with Epistos, they do actually like to sift through the sand a little bit if you have sand in your aquarium. And what that'll do is, like the quarries, that'll get out any of that decaying organic debris or detritus and make it a lot easier for your filter to suck up. And that does just help keep your aquarium a whole lot cleaner. So as for the water parameters for these guys, there can be a wide range of water parameters, but for the most part, you're gonna want a temperature of about 24 to 28 degrees Celsius, which is about 75 to 82 degrees Fahrenheit. And you're also gonna want a pH anywhere between six to 7.5 so that can obviously differ a little bit like I said but for the most part like most of the South American cichlids do like a range within that but yeah with that being said dwarf cichlids are another great little bottom dwelling aquarium fish moving on to the next fish on our list we have a another great cleaner fish we have bristle nose so I don't know if these guys are really considered like strictly bottom dwelling because they will go up on the sides of your glass but for the most part I often see my bristle nose along the bottom. So I'm just gonna put them on this list. But basically, bristlenose are one of the greatest algae eaters out there. They're great for cleaning off any surface algae, so particularly on your glass and on any of like your decor in your aquarium. And much like the quarries, they're great at kicking up any of that detritus as well. And if you have a large enough aquarium, they're by far an essential fish to have in my opinion. They make fish keeping a whole lot easier. They basically are a cheat code and it just means you don't have to clean your glass and your whole aquarium as often. Another great thing about them is they're actually super peaceful, so they can literally go with anything from goldfish to African cichlids, all sorts of tropical fish as well, and even cherry shrimp. So yeah, they're absolutely one of the most peaceful aquarium fish you can get. And they're a great beginner fish as well, so they're super easy to care for. They don't require any crazy diet. As long as you are feeding them algae wafers, they'll also eat any leftover fish food. And you can even supplement their diet with things like zucchini, green beans, and other green vegetables. But as for water parameters for these guys, you're gonna wanna keep them in a temperature of about 22 to 26 degrees Celsius, which is about 72 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And you're also gonna want a pH anywhere between 6.5 to 7.5. But yeah, with that being said, bristlenose are another great bottom dwelling aquarium fish and I would highly recommend them. Moving on to the next species of fish, we actually don't have a fish, we have cherry shrimp. So I like to sneak these guys into all of my lists even though they're not technically a fish, but they're very cool. So these guys are very much a bottom dwelling little critter. They, a lot of the time, stay around that bottom section of your aquarium and they'll only very rarely climb up like your sponge filter or any plants you've got growing. So these guys are great for super small aquariums. So if you have a really tight space in your house and you wanna get an aquarium, cherry shrimp are by far the best pick in my opinion. They can go in literally the smallest size aquariums. As well as that, they're very peaceful. So they really don't have any trouble with other aquarium fish as long as the aquarium fish aren't eating them. And one of the best tank mates I love to keep my cherry shrimp with is endless. They're by far like the dynamic duo, they're great little tank mates. Another super cool thing about cherry shrimp is they're relatively easy to breed as long as you're packing their aquarium full of aquarium plants, which is another thing I'd actually recommend. I wouldn't recommend keeping these guys without aquarium plants, they just won't do as well. But yeah, if you've got plenty of aquarium plants in there, they will breed and yeah, you just have little cherry shrimp babies, which is pretty cool. They're also great for beginners, so they're very easy to care for. And as for the water parameters, you're gonna wanna keep them in. You're gonna want a temperature of about 20 to 26 degrees Celsius, which is about 68 to 78 degrees Fahrenheit, and a pH anywhere between 6.5 to 7.5. So the only other thing I'd recommend if you are planning on keeping these guys is trying to put dried coral in their aquarium. So you can get crushed coral or just dried coral from aquarium stores. You can also just 
find it on the beach, which is what I do. And by putting that in your aquarium, it's gonna add a little bit of calcium to the water. And that's gonna mean when they're molting, which is basically when they're shedding their exoskeleton, their new exoskeleton is gonna be nice and strong. But yeah, with that being said, cherry shrimp are another great little bottom dwelling aquarium fish, and I would highly recommend them. Moving on to the final fish on our list, we've actually got sort of two here, but I just put them together because they're very similar. We have gudgeons and gobies. So there is actually quite a few different species of gudgeons and gobies. They're not really readily available though, probably just because people don't really like them, but I absolutely love them. I think you can get some super cool colored ones. You can get gobies like bumblebee gobies, desert gobies, cling gobies, and you can obviously get empire gudgeons, peacock gudgeons, purple spotted gudgeons. So yeah, they're a great little aquarium fish and they are very much a bottom dwelling fish. So a lot of the time you can put like a cave in your aquarium and they'll sort of sit in there, particularly gudgeons, they'll sort of like sit in there and because they're an ambush predator, they'll just wait. And that actually brings me to my next point. They're not the most peaceful aquarium fish because they are very predatory. And if you have small fish or cherry shrimp in there, they'll just eat them, which I mean, could be cool if you like live feeding. If you have like too many guppies or too many cherry shrimp, they're a great fish to help you cull. But you definitely can keep them without live food. So you can feed them frozen foods, which is my preferred food. I like to feed my gudgeons. You can also feed them live foods like baby brine shrimp, daphnia, things like that. They won't really eat flakes in my opinion, but pellets are another great thing you can sort of trick them into eating. Gobies, on the other hand, are relatively easier to keep. They're not as predatory. And if you get bumblebee gobies which are literally tiny they can go with practically anything the only thing they may eat is little baby guppies or antlers or even baby cherry shrimp but for the most part they're relatively peaceful and you can get away with feeding them small live foods so as for the water parameters for these guys much like the dwarf cichlids it can differ depending on what species you get but for the most part you're going to want a temperature of about 20 to 26 degrees celsius which is about 68 to 78 degrees fahrenheit and you're going to want a ph anywhere between 6.5 to 7.5 but yeah, with that being said, gudgeons and gobies are another two great little bottom dwelling aquarium fish. So that is actually going to bring us to the end of today's video. I hope you all enjoyed and I hope this video helps a few of you guys out. If you did enjoy today's video and you haven't done so already, please make sure to go down and subscribe. And while you're down there, smash the like button and comment your thoughts on today's video. I always love going down there and reading them all and I try to reply back to as many comments as I can. Also, if you're looking for any fish, go check out my website, Aussie Fish Keep com. I've got a few different species of fish up there. Up there, I've also got some botanicals and some other aquarium products. But yeah, with that being said, I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you all in that next video.